activities has significantly contributed to the development and presentation of weather information to the public service. No broadcaster exemplifies the standards and ideals of the NWA's Broadcaster of the Year Award more than James Spann. Mr. Spann has been a tireless champion of the science of meteorology in the central Alabama region since 1978. To earn the trust of the community is the highest calling of a broadcaster. For central Alabama, no one comes close to James Spann. That has become evident during the four decades that James has practiced his craft in the Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa and Montgomery communities. James is a meteorologist that Central Alabama residents instinctively turn to during good weather and bad, but especially during severe weather. James' hard and fast policy of wall-to-wall -wall coverage during any tornado warning would save countless lives on the night of April 8, 1998, when an F5 tornado killed 32 people in western Jefferson County, west of Birmingham. Then, as nearly every television in the market and thousands of live internet streams across the country watched him, James saved countless lives as he walked his audience through the most horrific tornado outbreak in Alabama history, as 62 tornadoes tore across the state on April 27th, 2011. Lastly, James' involvement and support of the Central Alabama community is unsurpassed. For his passionate dedication to serving the Central Alabama community with critical weather information for over 30 years, especially during the deadly April 27, 2011 tornado outbreak, our Broadcaster of the Year Award is proudly presented to James Mann. child of the super outbreak of 1974. <laughs> Not many of us left. I was a senior in high school. The largest outbreak of tornadoes on record in the United States up to that time. My hobby at the time was amateur radio. My call sign is Whiskey Oscar for Whiskey. That wonderful hobby got me into this today. The school allowed me three days off to volunteer after that horrible night. Our state was so hard hit. My first assignment was at a small rural hospital in a town called Jasper, Alabama. They assigned me a position in the emergency department. My job was to relay critical information from the hospital back to the relief agencies in Birmingham. I don't know to this day why they put me there. Understand in 1974 we had no cell phones, but there were so many other needs. But what I'll say is the fact that I lost my innocence that night. My life changed. I saw things I've never talked about in public or in private, and I never will. The nature of the wounds of those people is something an 18-year-old child should never see, but it changed my life. I never dreamed I would have another event like that in my lifetime, but we did last year. I, I've spent most of my time in public talking about what went wrong that day, but I do believe there are times to celebrate the things that went right. There are a lot of people walking around today that are alive because of the warnings provided on that day that affected the United States in a day that will go down in history. Despite what often the world teaches us, life is precious. You've got people walking around today like a... And I'm sorry, I, I, I am going through male menopause, okay? This is going to be hard to get through, all right? Uh, I don't know what's up with that. It just happens when you get older. Five-year-old kindergarten student, University Place Elementary School in Tuscaloosa. 18-year-old college student at the University of Alabama. 72-year-old widow in Pratt City. The family of 11 in Cordova, you don't know these people, but I do, and I've met countless others like them that have said their lives were saved because of the warnings. I might be the front face, but the truth is this award should be for everybody in this room, the entire weather enterprise, and for all the people that came before us and what they've done for our generation. The warnings were so timely that day. But everybody in this room, you should pat yourself on the back for the lives saved. Those that work in the research community, those that are in academics, those that work for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the National Weather Service, and the other broadcasters. The system does work. 
But on the other hand, let me just say this. We have a lot of work to do. The death toll that day in my state was 252. That is inexcusable. The warnings were excellent. Why did so many people die? Many of the bodies were found within walking distance of a perfectly safe place, and they didn't go there. Did they not hear the warning? Did they not know what to do? We've got the research community working on that in the social sciences. But I'll say this. I'm not as good as I think I am. I think a lot of us that are older fall into that trap. We've been doing this a long time. We think we're good. But the truth is I am not as good as I think I used to be. The greatest thing missing in this science is humility. There's so much we don't know and there's so many things we can't do. But there are so many opportunities to get better. So my challenge for my remaining years in this is to get better, to find out what went wrong that day, and let's fix it as a weather enterprise, and I know that we will. There's a lot to be learned, but I've learned a lot in the last year. But let's focus on the people, not us. It's easy to get in our, in our conferences and around these mahogany tables, and we do things that are right for us, but we have to do what's right for the people we serve. And the wonderful thing, I sense that spirit based on the content I've heard during this conference. We are going to get better and stronger, and the next time this happens, the loss of life will not be as excessive. Thank you, and God bless all of you.